Following on from previous episodes where we've looked at many ways now of implementing portfolio diversification, today I'll start to explore the concept of correlation between the individual components or techniques that make up that portfolio. But why is correlation important? Well, if the individual components within a portfolio are correlated, you won't get any benefit from diversifying across them. In fact, they're likely to increase your risk because when one of them experiences a loss, the other correlated components are likely to incur a similar loss. So being able to measure the correlation between components before we include them in our portfolio is essential. I'll be taking you through the process step by step and also making you aware of potential pitfalls along the way. Stay tuned. Following on from the introduction, hopefully you now understand why it's so important to be able to measure the correlation between the components in your portfolio. If you don't, and you include overly correlated components, this could increase risk and drawdowns instead of reducing them. But what do I mean by components of the portfolio? Well, this could be different assets or asset classes. It might mean trading your strategy in different timeframes across those assets, or it might also entail trading different strategies, all with the purpose of optimizing our objective function of increasing the reward to risk ratio of the portfolio. Now, the way that you need to measure the correlation will vary depending on which of these component types you're trying to measure. But don't worry, I'll cover each one in turn over the next few episodes. But in today's episode, I'll be explaining the basic techniques and tools that I'll be using so that everything makes sense when I get around to those specific techniques in the future. Let's make a start. So following on from the last episode where we looked at the techniques you can use to balance risk across a diversified portfolio, we now move on to the final section of this mini-series, which is measuring correlation. But because this is such an important topic, there will be several episodes where I go through all of the techniques you will need in order to do that across all of the different types of components. So let's now take a look at a couple of the techniques that we'll use to do this. The first of these is the coefficient of correlation. And this is sometimes called the Pearson correlation coefficient or simply Pearson's R. And in general statistical terms, this is used to measure the strength of a linear relationship between two variables. And it's used therefore to provide a measure of correlation between those variables. But before we can start to actually look at how this is used, we need to look at some of the principles behind the calculation. So this chart represents two of those variables which we're trying to measure the relationship between. And by carefully selecting the most appropriate variables, this is what will give us our indication of how correlated the different components are. Now this technique is based on a line of best fit methodology, but more than that, it then looks at how close each of the points is to that line. And this is what gives us our measure of the coefficient of correlation. So let's take a look at some extreme examples. The range of values actually goes from minus one up to plus one, where plus one represents a perfect positive correlation. And what that means is that as one variable increases, so does the other. And so we have a positive gradient like the one we see here, where each of the dots lies perfectly on that line. The opposite of this is again where we have a perfect relationship, but this time 
as one of the variables increases, the other one decreases. And that gives us this negative gradient, which results in a correlation value of minus one. Now, if there is simply no relationship between the two variables at all, then we'd get a value of zero. And in its most simplistic form, this is what we will use in order to ascertain the correlation between the assets in our portfolio. Now, the actual underlying calculation looks like this, but don't let this phase you. If you're a coder, then certainly you can code this to automatically calculate correlations. However, if you're not, don't worry. I'll be showing you an easy way of calculating this in Excel, and that won't require any coding knowledge at all. Now, following on from this, there's a further technique, and this is called the coefficient of determination, and this is known as R squared. And once you've calculated the previous coefficient, this one's simple, you just square the value. So what this means is that now, the range is between zero and positive one, where positive one now represents any perfect correlation, regardless of whether that was negative or positive. But a value of zero still represents that zero correlation use case. Now, why is this useful? Well, if you're as concerned about positive correlation as you are negative correlation, then this gives us the ideal mechanism of measuring what we need. And when it comes to measuring correlation across a portfolio, that is usually the case. Because if two of the assets in your portfolio were negatively correlated, but you were holding one of those long and one of them short, then you'd have exactly the same problem as two positively correlated assets that you were holding in the same direction. But the risk is effectively the same. So now that we have that grounding in the techniques that we're going to use, next time we're going to start putting them to use. And I'm going to start off by looking at one of the most common mistakes that traders use when measuring correlation. And I'm going to do this to ensure that you don't go down that path. And then in the episode that follows, I'll show you the correct way. If that episode's already available, then you'll see it top right now. If not, please do subscribe. Please remember to give me a thumbs up. And until next time, trade safe.